um, can you tell me a little bit about the topic that you're teaching? Well, uh, the topic that we're going to be going over while you're videotaping is going to be basically the physics of sound mm -hmm. and being more specific about how energy, matter, and waves are involved in that, in that topic. Okay. Um, so before doing this sort of unit about waves and energy and sound, what were some of the ideas that you were working on before that led up to it? Um, well, one of the things that I guess probably most closely relates to this is uh, just the concept of energy, energy transfers, and forms of energy mm -hmm. that student might <coughs> be familiar with. Mm -hmm. Well, and you had mentioned to me also like that you'd done a little bit about air particles at some point. Too. Yeah, so, like, they have um, an idea of what air is. Yeah, during the time that we were talking about force and motion, um, one of the things that came up quite a few times is just things that resist motion, mm -hmm. and one of those being air resistance. Mm -hmm. And just talking about how is it something we can't see is actually there and, and provides some resistance. So most of the students at that point even had a general understanding that there was mm -hmm. invisible particles, but mm -hmm. uh, we did talk more about it. Yeah, good. Yeah. Um, do you think that there's like some important building blocks that you've already put into place that are that you can imagine kids are going to build on for this unit? Well, I think that uh, <laughs> one of the things that... Uh, <laughs> it right <laughs> it's ready for his movie debut. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think the fact that um, that students realize that air is uh, composed of particles we can't see, and um, the other thing I think that'll that'll come into this that's already been put in place is the conservation of energy. The idea that we have energy, we can transform it from one form to another, we can mm -hmm. move it from one uh, object to another, um, can happen. But in general, we don't just get rid of yeah. it, or it doesn't. Yeah. Good. How would you think that the way you're planning out this little unit is different from how like the physical science textbook suggests that yeah. you teach the same topic? <clears throat> uh, I guess it, it, it varies in a few different ways. Um, I think one of the biggest things that I see is initially in this unit, I'm going to ask them to form explanations about what's going on or how something's happening. Uh, versus maybe a textbook throwing out um, that information to be, to begin with and then having them digest and understand that. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing I would see that will be different is in this unit, I think we'll take a few central concepts and uh, build a firm uh, foundation with those uh, to to then maybe think more broadly about other other sound phenomena. But I see the textbook uh, bringing quite a few things together in one or two chapters and then just mm -hmm. having a very brief treatment mm -hmm. of each one. Mm -hmm. so. Like we talked about, it just does like every possible kind of mm -hmm. wave and then every possible kind of sound. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And each one gets maybe at most two paragraphs or... Right. So. Yeah. Okay. Great. So um, let's think just specifically about this unit and can you describe for me some of the like, explanations? and models that you're going to be having kids work with? Yeah, um, to start with, um, we'll be talking about uh, instruments and the sounds that they make and how how is it that the instrument makes this sound, what's happening. So they'll be diagramming um, instruments. Um, they'll also move on to also thinking about how tuning forks uh, produce sound, what's involved, and then it's still say that's with, with diagramming um, the, the physical thing, but connected to both of those is going to be uh, representations of stuff that the students uh, can't directly see, mm -hmm. but they know uh, is, is playing a part in this. So mm -hmm. um, how is it that the sound's traveling through the air? Um, what is it that the, maybe the movement of the tuning fork or the instrument string mm -hmm. is doing to then create the sound and, and how that works. Mm -hmm. So it would be models and diagrams. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. So uh, let's work sort of backwards, you know, from two weeks from now when we're at the end of this unit. Mm -hmm. Like, what are you hoping that you could hear kids talking about in their explanations? It's kind of like you've 
you would count what you had done as being successful? Yeah. Uh, I guess from the, the start to the end um, with how sound works, basically how a sound's produced, mm -hmm. how it travels, mm -hmm. and then how it is that we, we sense that. I'd like them to have something um, uh, to say in each step of the mm -hmm. way and have an understanding mm -hmm. of how that works. Um, I guess also just the, the differences between sounds themselves, um, mm -hmm. what constitute uh, the differences. Mm -hmm. And what are some underlying ideas that you're hoping to hear them bring up in their answers to those questions? Well, I think uh, one of the things is, is they're going to need, well, they, they should be understanding that sounds traveling in waves, it may be different than their initial ideas of how that wave looks, mm -hmm. um, what it's actually doing to the medium as it moves through it, and also um, talk about pitch and what makes pitch mm -hmm. uh, or frequency different within the uh, mm -hmm. within a given sound. And be able to talk about that also like in terms of something about the wave. Yeah, and how that how that ties into what a, a, what a wave looks like or how a wave is represented. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, sounds great. Um, and what kind of pieces of evidence do you think that kids will start to draw upon, you know, on the basis of like this two week unit, what do you what kind of evidence do you think that they'll be able to rally when they're trying to describe to you their explanations? Um, I guess one of the things that um, I'm thinking that they will they'll be talking about is ideas of frequency, mm -hmm. uh, whether whether they're talking about pitch um, in a in more musical mm -hmm. sense or whether they may be talking about uh, the hertz of a, a particular mm -hmm. sound. In, uh, in a scientific sense. Um, I guess the other thing I'd like to see them talking about is um, as we use the uh, Rubens tube or the, mm -hmm. the gas flame tube, hopefully tying uh, the representation of the sound wave mm -hmm. and the flames to what's actually happening in the particles of gas that mm -hmm. goes through the, uh, the chamber. Yeah. So it sounds like that you're saying with the pitch idea, like that maybe kids would talk about, I can hear it being higher or lower, mm -hmm. but then that they'd also be able to make the sort of inference about the, that that has something to do with frequency. What's their evidence for frequency? Yeah, the, um, one of the things that I think that'll, that'll bridge that gap is when we do the work with the tuning forks, um, mm -hmm. using the computer, Using GarageBand, they're going to be able to determine the pitch mm -hmm. of the particular tuning fork that they're working with. Then, I think what we'll really need to do to have them see that in how it relates to a wave mm -hmm. is to cross-reference uh, the pitch that they have there or the number that's stamped on the fork yeah. as hertz mm -hmm. to then look and cross-reference yeah. that with some, some background. other information. Yeah, yeah, and then and you had mentioned too that the GarageBand like shows kind of an amplitude of mm -hmm. the volume, so that that's another source yeah. for some of their evidence. Yeah, yeah. It'll, yep, it'll give them that. Plus and, uh, like the direct, you know, that they'll hear it, a sound being loud versus the sound being quiet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so besides that sort of like firsthand data collection, can you think of any other sources of evidence or in information that kids are going to be drawing on? Like, what are some of the other sort of experiences that they might have or yeah. uh, like background reading or anything like that that they might get a chance to look at? Well, outside of the classroom, I think um, I have a fair amount of students that have either music in the family or music as a, uh, as a school uh, subject and they've been in band or, or play musical instruments on their mm -hmm. own. So I think there will be quite a bit of rich information that will come to the classroom uh, from personal experience. Um, the other thing that I see is, uh, you know, other other ways that students are getting information is they'll, they will have a little bit of background information that will um, hopefully bring up their level of uh, explanations with mm -hmm. some pretty rich uh, scientific background that uh, I don't expect them to have from somewhere else, but right. we'll give to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sounds good. Um, so this is kind of a broad question, but I'm wondering, like, what kind of scaffolding or like what kind of help are you going to give to students in order to be able to understand both like the direct sound that they're hearing and the sort of underlying model of the 
waves that you've been talking about and the energy transfer that you've been talking about? Like, how are you going to help them combine the experience with the underlying explanation? Okay. Um, I guess one of the things that, um, I guess one of the ways we'll go about it is that um, the students will have a, a fair amount of opportunities to have some experiences in the classroom that will be a kind of a common experience mm -hmm. um, with the tuning forks, uh, with instruments, then to get their initial ideas out um, in diagrams and models and a kind of a tentative claim mm -hmm. or explanation about how something works, then it's really not going to go much beyond that without some more information. Mm -hmm. So with the students doing a jigsaw based on some uh, assigned readings and becoming experts in different areas and then sharing that information uh, as a group to come together and, and really be an expert on like, mm -hmm. how sound works, that's, that's how I'm thinking about getting that started. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. Yeah. Great. All right, um, we've talked a little bit about representations, but can you just um, speak for a moment about like what's their initial representation going to be, and then maybe like how are you going to help them elaborate on their representations over time? Okay, um, I've been envisioning, as we've talked about this, uh, that students most likely whenever I ask them to you know, show an instrument that's making sound and how that sound's traveling to a listener, mm -hmm. um, a, a very direct path from the instrument to the listener's mm -hmm. ear possibly, um, I guess much like you'd see it in, in cartoons. Mm -hmm. um, I like, a, like a note coming yeah, directly exactly. like, to yeah. your ear. And I don't yeah. know if it, will have a, uh, if it will have a waiting look maybe, or mm -hmm. if it will just be a straight line to your ear. The thing that I, I, I think that they'll, well, I'm trying to think how I'm going to say, um, I guess what, what I'd like them to, to move towards is, is thinking about, um, I guess, uh, I mean, I'm kind of getting lost. What I <laughs> like say. a, like a vibration maybe yeah. rather than like a direct Yeah, I guess travel. what I'm thinking that, that they're, that I'm wanting to see later on is that, that they realize that the collision of particles within the mm -hmm. air and mm -hmm. being less of a maybe a wave like they're thinking a music wave often mm -hmm. looks like but more of a, a collision of particles mm -hmm. happening between you and, and whatever's mm -hmm. making the sound mm -hmm. um, and that's that's kind of the goal of what I, I want to see yeah. right there. Yeah, sounds the good. That. Um, you talked a little bit about kids having some musical experiences. Do you think that there might be other ideas from their everyday lives that you could bring to bear on their understanding about sound? Like, What, what else do you think they might draw upon? You know, I, th I would think that they'll, they'll draw upon uh, probably information that they get from the TV. I know mm -hmm. a lot of times that they bring up stuff that they've either seen in a movie or seen on TV. Uh, I'm wondering if they'll maybe bring up any in instances where they've seen like uh, sound have the ability to do something like break glass mm. or mm -hmm. to, to be something powerful uh, yeah. or to, uh, to hurt the ear. Yeah, um, like if they've ever been to a loud concert mm -hmm. or something. Yeah. Exactly. And then I'm, I'm thinking the other thing that might come up is just uh, everyday experiences with headphones and mm -hmm. iPods and uh, stereo systems. Yeah, yeah. Sounds good. Um, so you mentioned earlier a couple of shared experiences. So you're going to create like this chance to all sort of mess around with some instruments mm -hmm. together and do some stuff with tuning forks together. Are there any other shared experiences that you're going to sort of build in, or is that pretty much? I think really the um, the tuning forks, uh, the experience with tuning forks on them on their own, or the tuning forks interacting with water or against mm -hmm. paper, or another object. Mm -hmm. And, oh, and then you're awesome. Yeah, and then Ruben. the the Rubens <laughs> tube is the other thing, the the foam tube that uh, that will represent. Uh, well, that actually makes visible a sound wave, a standing wave inside yeah. the tube. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be awesome. Yeah, so I think I think that's that's gonna do. Yeah, it. yeah, that would be great. Um, so is there sort of like an overarching essential question, and maybe some sub questions that you're really aiming this unit 
towards? Yeah, uh, I would say that the main question is just how, how does sound work? Mm -hmm. And within that, uh, really, how is sound made? Like, what is sound? And like the differences between sounds and tones that we hear. Mm -hmm. um, those would be the, the, probably like the, the big, big things that underlie that. Um, mm -hmm. I guess the other thing that obviously goes there is a little bit about like how is it that we sense sound and, and mm -hmm. what is it that we mm -hmm. do whenever we hear hear a sound. Mm -hmm. So yeah. those would be the under 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 uh, questions of that. Yeah, can you um, think a little bit sort of futuristically for for a minute and think about like how do these ideas from the little sound unit how are they relevant for other ideas that maybe you're building towards you know, down the road for the rest of your class? Uh, I think one of the things that will uh, will lend itself towards the uh, future areas of study is is the idea of particles interacting. Mm -hmm. um, the particles in the air interacting with other objects, but also I think continuing on with the energy. Um, I think some of the kids buy into the idea that, you know, energy can um, be transferred from one place to another, um, but I think that there's a fair amount of kids that do really have a, they really wonder where is, where is the stuff going? If it's unavailable for us to use again, where is it? Mm -hmm. um, like whenever a sound happens, like where is that yeah. energy that was there? Where yeah. does it go? And I think that uh, that idea of particles hitting mm -hmm. each other is going to, is going to bring that out a little more, but I think, um, I don't know. I, I think that those are going to be the things that yeah, with the particle nature of air and mm -hmm. then the and the whole transfer of energy, transfer conservation, of conservation. Of energy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then finally, sort of last set of questions. Sometimes science feels like a really specialized language, mm -hmm. and so I'm wondering: Are there some language practices that might be unique to science or kind of specialized that you're feeling like you're probably going to have to help your students learn that language? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I guess as with science and math and I guess any subject, there's a certain set of um, vocabulary that needs to be uh, understood before before they can uh, mm -hmm. use that vocabulary to explain something. Um, but the other thing I think is going to be really uh, a challenge is having the students um, tie uh, representations of waves along with uh, certain terms mm -hmm. and how then those representations with the, the models and the words then fit with certain mm -hmm. set of phenomena mm -hmm. and get that all mm -hmm. in order so it's so it aligns correctly mm -hmm. and, and makes sense. Yeah. Uh, those will probably be so know, like some the of the practice of linking the theory sort of explanation with the phenomenon itself, yeah. with the evidence yeah, that exactly. you've gathered. Yeah, exactly. Knowing like the type of wave and mm -hmm. then the form of that wave and how that affects how mm -hmm. it sounds and, and yeah. so forth. Yeah. Are there any, um, you mentioned math also having specialized language, are there any like mathematical sort of practices or language that Maybe it's not really language, maybe it's like representations and symbols that you're going to have to help kids understand. Yeah, um, there's there's a few things on, uh, you know, calculating wavelength that I don't think will really come up right now. But uh, in, in another way, I think, um, I'm trying to think that, uh, I guess, I mean, well, one thing is, is that it's it's. I think it's going to be kind of a a difficult thing for students to understand. Like, like one part of this is quantifying something that can't be seen. Mm -hmm. That will be one part, um, and then also kind of thinking within that, um, there are uh, certain systems of measurements for frequency, mm -hmm. and then the different types of, uh, I guess, the nomenclature for the different parts of a wave. Yeah, and the image itself. Mm -hmm. and, and the change it's of that. Like, that's a mathematical mm -hmm. like, yeah. communication tool. Of what's, yeah. what's happening. Yeah, that represents something that, you know, doesn't seem to exist, like, to your vision. So, yeah, that's, that's good. 
Um, and then finally, do you think that there's some practices that are going to be totally new for students, like maybe, you know, the act of theorizing or something mm -hmm. like that? Is there something that's brand new? You know, um, I wouldn't say it's brand new, but it's definitely something that we haven't done uh, a lot of real recently. It's just the, just generating models mm -hmm. and models and explanation uh, for something that's not observable mm -hmm. directly. I mean, you know, we can observe sound and we can hear it, but I think they haven't had as much experience in the last stuff that we've talked about. Um, just because you're it's saying so observable. It's observable. Yeah. yeah, and I think this will be a stretch for some of them, but um, I think that using these couple of different ideas mm -hmm. for diagramming and models mm -hmm. uh, it should give should give them something to work with. Yeah. All right. Thanks. All right. Thank you. <laughs>